Well, we want to welcome you here. We are here to worship. We are here to hear the word of God. We are here to fellowship with one another and to know a little bit more about who it is that saved us and who it is that's coming to get us again. Uh, pretty soon, I hope. It'll be wonderful. Whenever, will be good. But I want to share a few things with you. Shane is not standing here because he is home and healthy, but he is self-quarantining because there, there's been exposure again, and he wants to make sure that he's being safe. So he said, please don't worry about him. He is healthy. So uh, Christmas Eve services, I want to mention that. We are having Christmas Eve services. People have been asking. They are at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Now, that di distance is so that we can videotape the service, and then we're going to put it on YouTube at 7 o'clock for people who are shut in at home so that they can have a Christmas Eve service with us as we meet at 7 o'clock. So that will be happening Christmas Eve, 3 and 7. And uh, again, the nursery, for those who are wondering, is not officially open. It's not staffed, but it is open to people so parents or guardians can take their children in there. There's audio in there of what's happening here so that you can be a part of the service if your children are amused enough to leave you alone. And uh, starting tomorrow, uh, on the 13th, we're resuming what is called mask recommended services. Bearing in mind, we have people who are vulnerable and that if you're not going to wear a mask, please observe social distancing practices. Please make sure you wash your hands. Please make sure that you don't put others at risk as you come if you choose not to wear a mask, but they are still recommended. As we enter the season for snow, uh, we, if there are cancellations, it will be broadcast on WTVB, the local radio stations, Wood TV also. You can call the answering machine if you're wondering. The message will be on the answering machine. Or if you have email and are on that chain, it will go to you so that you'll know in plenty of time not to venture out. As always, if you don't feel safe, don't come out. The advantage of this year is we will probably be doing Saturday services and you'll be able to stay at home and watch them anyway. So we won't have that, uh, that gap any longer. Uh, a few things. Uh, someone asked me about the kids' ministry position. They said, how can we afford to add that? Well, we're not adding that. That's already in the budget. So just for people at home wondering or people here that are wondering, that's already in the budget. It's not spending additional funds. It's, they are funds budgeted and not being spent currently. So we are set for that, but if you have interest in that and you want to work with kids at that level, it'd be mostly preschoolers, nursery, and some other assignments as needed, uh, let us know and apply for it. Uh, again, for 20 years or so, we've had people who pray during the services. And uh, this happened a long time ago when we were, Shane and I were talking during worship and he had read about a, a church that has people praying during the sermon time, praying for the preaching, praying for the participants, everything. And Shane started doing that here, but we do have people, we need people to do that. And uh, by all means, by all means, if you are at home, please do that. When we're meeting at 8.30, please be in prayer during that time for us because you don't have to be in a specific place. You just have to be praying to the, to the Lord who hears. Uh, just a couple other things, coats for kids and families, winter coats, snow pants, scarves, hats, gloves, boots, maybe dropped off at Coach EB Center, that's 89 West Chicago Street, the old armory for those who remember when the armory was here, in the blue barrels on the front porch. And uh, last year they were able to reach uh, nearly 500 families with this outreach, and that's what Christians do. That's what Jesus did. He went to those in need and he ministered to their needs. And if we want to be like him, we get to be a part of that by doing things like this. So uh, one last thing, youth ministry, uh, Christmas pajama movie night, Friday, December 18th, 7 p.m. for junior and senior high. And uh, Kevin wants you to come dressed in, in your comfy PJs and watch the movie Elf. And uh, however that works, I'd rather not go out in my PJs simply because it's cold in the winter. Well, that's all we have for you now. We're going to continue with worship 
and uh, one of my favorite times of year when we get to sing Christmas songs. But we have the uh, call to worship on the screen. And this is actually a reading. Uh, it's written by Mary E. Caldwell. Who shall come in the fullness of time to gladden the hearts of men? Who shall bring us to a lost world and the poor and the needy defend? Who shall come on a winter's eve when the world is hushed and still? Only silent stars keep watch as the promise of God is fulfilled. As a newborn child he comes to a lowly manger bed. Tis the gentle, humble Jesus, Prince of Peace, Son of the living God. Let's sing together. Come thou long expected Jesus.
Jesus, when thou comest and callest for me. Let's pray. Lord, you did call for us. You came for us. You redeemed us. And you will redeem more. Use the testimonies here in this church. Use the love in this church. Use the preaching in this church, the worship in this church, the people of this church to reach the lost. Deepen your roots in us. Deepen our feelings, the strength of love for one another. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a familiar reading. And at the end, I, I will have you read. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Aren't you glad? Let's stand together as we continue worshiping. Angels from the realms of glory. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, Worship Christ, the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations. Brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations. Ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Why this jubilee? Why 
by your joyous strains prolong what the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song Gloria in act shall cease day Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the God had seen, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. You can be seated. As we go to prayer, I want to first offer you the opportunity to take a moment and pray for loved ones in your family who are suffering right now, suffering with depression, suffering with illnesses, suffering, recovering from surgeries, and that type of thing. Just take a moment and pray, and then I will follow up, and then we'll continue in prayer. Lord, no one, including those who hear my voice right now, love these people more than you do. And we ask you to intervene in their lives. We ask you to bring healing to broken bodies. We ask you to bring healing to the sick. We ask you to bring joy and hope to those who are depressed and struggling emotionally during this time. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and ask that you would comfort them at this time. Lord, we also pray for churches in this community that are struggling financially. Pray that you would lift them up. 
Pray that you would uh, allow them to learn in this circumstance how to depend on you more and more and that you would grow yourself in them. We want to see you made manifest in this church and in the churches in our community. We want to see your love poured out. We want to see your grace poured out. We want to see hope. And we want to see the churches be a beacon of your light. Work in us, Lord. Use us. For missionaries on the field, we ask you to, to give them clarity of the message of the gospel. We know that they are out there reaching out to those who are without hope, who are without you in this world. You were so, you are so generous. You were so comfortable making your truth known to the lost. Give them a comfort and a strength and a protection to do that. As our brother Bob DeBolt comes to, to preach to us, Lord, prepare our hearts, give him clarity, give him yourself, and help us, Lord, to hear, and ear, with ears that heard, to follow after you, to love you and to love others. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good afternoon. When they uh, draw straws, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> but let me remind you, it's not the straw that's important. It's what you suck in. <laughs> that really counts. Uh, here. The title of this message is The Mediator of Love. So I come to you in the name of the Father who loves you. And his son who loves you. And his spirit that pours out the love, that eternal love into your hearts. And I come to you also in the name of your shepherd. Shane called me this morning. And the Lord had my heart ready. So uh, we accepted the opportunity to share to you. We would like to draw your attention to Matthew 22, start reading with uh, 36. In 36, a lawyer that is a person who studied and taught the laws of God in the Old Testament. He was well knowledgeable of what his question was when he asked Jesus, the teacher Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And a second is like to, to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands depend the whole law and the prophets. What a tremendous answer. A little earlier in Jesus' life, Jesus had asked a lawyer the same question. That's in Luke 10. And the man answered this very same way. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, well, and the man asked, asked, responded this way, and who is my neighbor? In other words, he is saying, whom am I to love? That's quite a question, isn't it? Whom am I to love? Well, your neighbor as yourself. Do you love yourself in any way? Do you ever get up and feed yourself and take care of your body? Well, yes, I take care. And so Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan. He answered that man's question, who he was to love, and he added to it how he was to love. I think that's very important for us to pick out. Not only who, but how. 
we love. And so when we consider the mediator of love, we are considering the only person in the flesh who ever kept those two commandments. And I want to communicate on that. Could we have a word of prayer? Our Father in heaven, we don't want to fail to be renewed in love, to be like Jesus in love, to let the Holy Spirit shed his love abroad in our heart. We want to be connected with God the Father who so loved us. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we'll drink in that which your Spirit has to say to us today concerning these two great commandments. We don't want to be the greatest failures. We want to be renewed in the power of your love. And we ask you to speak to our hearts today in the name of Jesus. I suppose everybody here would know that time in life when we heard on the news that they were, there was a plane flying, a jet plane, and a, another jet plane could come and hook up and draw. It, it flew its fuel right into itself. Why they, they were flying in midair. You remember that? That was quite a feat, wasn't it? to fly jets at their speed and to hook them together and, and draw. Now, I want you to know Jesus is risen. He's there. You need to hook up. You need to be filled with that fluid of love of his Holy Spirit into your heart. And this message is to help us to know that this is where love comes from and that we can have it and we can know we're loved and we can love one another, and we can live as we are commanded to live because that is available to you and me. Now, the person of Jesus Christ loved God with all his heart. He loved the Father of creation. Often, when the disciples would look for him, they would find he was communicating with the Father. They were out talking to one another. And he was, he was there in that love for God, and that must have been a tremendous communication of love. You know, that's the way it needs to be in our homes. That communication of love flowing between one another. And he loved God so much that he surrendered his whole life to do the will of God. And that's the kind of love we're talking about. That kind of loving the Lord God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds. So we will surrender to that love that is flowing from our Creator into our lives. Perfect love knows no mistrust. Jesus had no mistrust of the Father. And the Father so trusted him in quite a mission in this world. Loveless world. Satan hates love. He wants to break love. He will do everything he can to, to get you to quit loving. He worked on Jesus too. And Jesus never fell for his tricks. Praise God for that. Perfect love knows no mistrust. His love for God enabled him to fulfill the, the work that God had sent him to do. God had given him a mission. What is a mission when there's lovelessness? It's a heartache, isn't it? Jesus came into a loveless world to fulfill a mission. To die on a cross for his enemies. That is a very challenging assignment. But that's why he came and he loved God enough to do the work and say it is finished when it was done. 
So we know he completed his mission for us. His love for God is so strong. It's there to bring the love of God into my heart, into your heart, into our lifestyle, so that we no longer will doubt whether God loves us or not. That is an eternal truth. And Jesus came to connect us with the love of God and to, to come into our living situation, whatever it has been, and it's been many unpleasant and many times, I'm sure, in all of our lives. But you know what? It isn't the circumstances. It isn't the work of the devil that's going to win in the long run. It's when we connect with the love of God and drink in the, the love that he has for us and trust his love. That is what really is going to count in the long run. And that mission to bring that love into our heart is why he came. That's the basis of, of his presence of this season that we sing. Think of all the beauty that's in the display here. I, I like the display that's here. And when you get to be in the presence of God in your glorified body, you'll not question that love. The beauty of that will be beyond anything that we could produce. That's a beautiful thing when we think of what God did at Christmas time. Because Jesus is the mediator of God's love to whosoever will. He will mediate that love to that heart, to that soul, to that person. He will mediate that love through his spirit and through his word so that our minds don't even doubt anymore whether we're loved by God. That is a wonderful mediation that he it did through his life, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and his intercession for us in heaven. He is mediating for you right now. He came to reinstate you into the love of God in that, in a relational way. What is relation without love anyway? But when you are in a relational love with God, as one lady said one day, and I was encouraged by that, well, you walk and talk with God. That's relationship. That is when we love God, that's the kind of person we become, one who can walk and talk with God. In Matthew 22, we read in 37, you shall love the Lord your God. That's a command. That's a foolish command to break. That's a foolish command to, to doubt. That is a command. He said, with all your heart. Do you know it's, it's within you, the heart of you that God communicates his love that's how the Holy Spirit works if our hearts are not in tune with him we miss it there's a lot of circumstances out here that want to get your attention off of, off of your heavenly father and his way of love but when your heart is in communion you break with the power that wants to destroy love, and you begin to show love to the point where others are amazed that you can do it in those situations. Love the Lord with all your heart, not half your heart, all your heart. Love the Lord with all your soul. Your soul depends on that. Do you know that? If you stop loving God, you're in a bad shape. Our eternity depends on the fact that we're loving the Lord our God with all our soul. We're connected with him in love. 
Love the Lord your God with all your mind. Think. Think love. Whatever comes into your mind that is unloving, turn it away. Don't accept it. Don't let it rest in your mind. Think love. When we learn to think love, we no longer doubt God. We trust God. We are letting the mediator of love do his work in us and developing us into his likeness. So we have to learn to, to love the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, all our thoughts, and we do that kind of thing with our Lord, not just on Saturdays and Sundays, but on 24-7 all the time. Live in love. Live in the embrace of God's love. Jesus not only fulfilled the first commandment, he fulfilled the second one too. To love his neighbor as himself. He loves us to the point of perfection. That is fantastic, isn't it? There's no thought in his love for you and me. He loves us so perfectly. But while we are yet sinners, he died for us. He didn't turn us away. He loves us not only as the mediator of love, but as the king of love. That's the kind of king that we need to follow. That's the way he loves us. Whosoever is, is not a whom shall I love question or statement. Whosoever, he says, for God so loved the world that whosoever believes in this mediator of love will not perish but have everlasting life. That's broad. We talk about enemies and nations and wars and things. That's not the way the Lord thinks. Whosoever, that's how he thinks. That, that includes you. When I was pastoring, we had a woman who came to church and she explained to me very early after I was there that there are times she wouldn't be in church because her husband didn't want her to be there. And there's times he wanted to take trips and, and she would be there, but she would be praying for us. I told her we'd be praying for her. One day during a youth uh, event we had, they opened their home for the youth to come over. And we came over. It was uh, where you ate one meal in one house and another part of the meal in another house, progressive meal. And uh, while we were there, he went out to the garage where everybody had to take off their shoes before they came in because it was oriental. And uh, we ate with chopsticks. Anyway, he scrambled our shoes up. <laughs> really scrambled them up. And while the kids are on scrambling their shoes, and I decided I would wait because they got all their shoes on, I'd know how to find mine. <laughs> I, I talked to Thurlow. And I said, Thurlow, I just want to say this to you before I go. For God so loved Thurlow that he gave his only begotten son for Thurlow. That if Thurlow would believe in him, Thurlow would not perish, but have everlasting life. And Thurlow said, oh, that don't mean me. I says, the word is whosoever. And we left. It took him about a month to come to Jesus. He said, I couldn't fight that. He realized all the bad that he had done, which he thought was unredeemable, the love of God broke through. Whosoever. That's the mediator of love at work in the hearts of those that don't know 
what love is. We had a foster child who never had been loved and we could not move towards him with any speed because he would defend himself. We had to teach him that there was such a thing as a touch. He's a Christian today. Praise God. We have a mediator of love that wants to work through us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And he's taught us how to love. The who is not a question, that's whosoever. It's the how to love, to care for one another is there in the teaching of Jesus as we take time to read it and learn it. Yes, he stretched out his hands in love as a mediator on the cross. To connect whosoever with God. What a mediator we have. And he didn't even grumble when they nailed him. And you know, every time we're on loving, it's like driving a nail in him. It causes grief to him because he's the king of love. When we think about these two commandments, they're powerful. Do you want to be great? What is greatness in God's eyes? What did Jesus say? To love God and to love man. If you don't love God and don't love man, you're not great in God's eyes. Oh, but we have the Holy Spirit who comes to us to shed the love abroad in our hearts if we will love Jesus. If we'll love our mediator and let him do his work, that love will work in us. The imperfectness of, of us, he looks right through. He comes into the heart and he says, I love you. And when we answer back, I love you. When we say, forgive me. He said, I already said that on the cross. It's there. Accept it. I love you. The love of Christ deserves a response. It deserves a response of love. To love him with all our hearts, with all our minds, and all our souls, and to love our neighbor as he would Love working through us. The demonstration of love is before us. Jesus Christ came to reestablish all those broken relationships, all those failures, their history. When you submerge yourself, drink it in. You got a little straw here, but you suck in from the, from the like the plane in the air, you know? You hook him up, hook yourself up, and the tank that you have can be refilled with love daily. We need to check the gauges of our tanks. Sometimes they get dry. Three weeks ago, I came up here to tell Shane that my wife and I both have cancer now, dermatology told us I have two inches on my neck cut out and she has part of her nose cut off today last Tuesday and Shane says let me pray for you and he prayed and he prayed that we would not let this cancer cause us to doubt God when he got done praying I just spontaneously spoke out of my heart. I've come too far to let that, to think like that anymore. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? We, it can come and you are here. You know what I'm saying, don't you? 
as you progress with the Lord in his love and you see him answer your prayers time after time, you see, you see him come to you when you've fallen short and he forgives you, you understand. They come to a place where we've crossed over from doubts to faith. We've crossed over from hate, it's self-pity, to love. And we drink it in, and it's always available. It never runs out. It's an eternal love. Human love does run out. God's love will never run out. We need to get our focus where the love flows. The Holy Spirit is here to shed the love abroad, God abroad in our hearts. Paul hated Christians. He thought that was a cop to get rid of until he met Jesus. And then he said in Romans 5, 5, the Holy Spirit has shed the love abroad in my heart. I'm a different man than I was before. Oh, love does make a big difference when you're in the real thing. It's a beautiful thing that we can do. The work of the Holy Spirit is to replace in you and me every unloving attitude, every action, every thought with love. So instead of hating somebody who mistreats us or doesn't think very well of us, we love them. He's here to replace all your bad lovelessness with the love of God. He is the mediator of love and he's flowing and he's there for us and he wants to replace it all. Just let it go and let him fill you. This is the time to drink. This is the time to be connected in a relationship with the Father of love. This is the time to know who the mediator is and where to go and get it. This is the time to open your heart and let the Spirit pour out his love in your heart till you are just able. Not because you have to think the love. It just happens now from you. You are a changed person. You know, a devil came to Eve and got her not to love God. And you know what happened from there on? Now, we don't want that same mistake to happen. We should have learned better by now. The Holy Spirit is the one who wants us to realize that Jesus said, I am giving you a new commandment. That's in, Matthew, in John 13, 33 and 34. Now what in the world could he command greater than the two great commandments? He just put them together. That's what he did. The commandment is to love one another as I have loved you. By this, everybody will know you belong to me. Isn't that sweet? We know we belong to him. And LCC is here as a dispenser of the love of God in this community. We are the dispensers to spread that love abroad. It's a beautiful thing to be a part of the church of Jesus Christ and have the love connection that works for eternity, not just for a minute. It keeps on working and working and working. Check your gauge. You need to pull up to the love supply. Get lined up with a straw from heaven and drink. 
Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, everything we need for life and godliness comes down from you in such a bundle of love that we can know beyond a shallow of doubt that we are loved by God, that we're loved by Jesus, that we're in the body of Christ. And others will see that we are your disciples. Heavenly Father, I pray that the mediation of Jesus Christ will be at work now in our lives, tomorrow, whatever comes, that we'll never forget there is a mediator of love. For God, you have loved us so much that you give us that mediator, that we will not perish in our lovelessness, but have eternal life where love flows forever. Help us, Lord, to stay connected. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Bob. Well, as we dismiss today, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, please remember that we are um, being cautious, but we are being loving. And uh, thank Bob for his message and uh, ask you to continue to pray for this church, continue to pray for the healing, for the strength, for the connection to Christ. Uh, he is our lifeline. And without him, we produce no fruit. So we need him, and we need him, and we need him again. Uh, continue, if you would, to remember the financial needs of the church, that we are struggling a little bit in a downturn. Um, and just pray for us. Pray that the Lord will continue sustaining. You know, he has sustained us through this year uh, in a wonderful way, so that even with downturns in giving, we've met the budget for the entire year. The Lord is so faithful, so good to us, and we thank him for that. As you leave this place, leave in the love of Christ, leave in the hope of Christ, and be God's. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. By the way, I'll be over here if you want to pray. I'll be over on the side. I'll put my mask back on if you need prayer. Uh, Bob, would you be willing to be there too? We're dismissed.